colour painting is about the, the, the holy trinity of colour, space and light. Obviously colour, you've got to have colour. The space is that expansiveness of, 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 the, of flat, that flat two-dimensional surface. It's that spread across horizontally, as different from European colour painting, which is that cubist colour approach, where you bring out the, bring out the shapes or the colour from, from the surface, Mondrian, say, for example. But for me, the colour, space and light is the product of the investigations by people like Mark Rothko and, and Barnett Newman. People might look at these paintings and think that they look extremely spontaneous and even perhaps chaotic, but actually they're very considered, aren't they? They are very considered, and this is one of the aspects of this particular style of work, that um, it eventuated in New York uh, because of the artists wanting to expand what had taken place into, into new areas, and the term uh, lyrical abstraction came into play, and that was different from abstract expressionism in the sense that it was far more considered, it was far more sort of planned per se. It, it wasn't uh, like abstract expressionism where there's great verve and activity and, and isn't life great and so forth. And, uh, but it, it lost that, that sort of cohesive structure of being a painting at times. It was a little bit too sort of, you know, hopefully it'll, it will work. You know? Uh, with the lyrical abstraction, it was, much, as I say, much more considered. The process would had to be considered because if it's not, you could fall into a great huge dollop of paint and it looked terrible. It's got to be well considered from the start to go through all the various aspects of applying paint and so forth. The little dots and lines and, and intricacies and the, and the nuance of colour have all got to come together to work. It's to do with the experience of looking. You know? The more that you look at paintings, the more that you start to you know, be considered of, of what's going on within the surface of the painting and how it's applied. You know, you virtually take it apart from, 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 the, from the, like a, like a skeleton of front. You strip it right down to the bare bones. You know? And uh, that was the, that's the case with lyrical abstraction. That it, it, it's for me, it, it's much more considered. It's much more structured. The stain paintings developed uh, at the end of 1970 when I started to realise that uh, I needed an extension to the work that I was doing at the time, which was uh, called the a series called the Link Paintings, and they came about uh, because. The series that I was uh, involved in back in Australia called the modulars weren't uh, feasible to, to continue on with in New York when I arrived there in, in 1968, or end of 68, and uh, with my wife. So I developed the series called the links. They, they were sort of like uh, painting sketches in a sense. And um, I realised that uh, I needed to loosen up the surface to, to start to pour paint as a different type of process from what I'd been using in the previous series. And um, consequently, the, the, the stain series started to eventuate with ideas and, and, and sketches, works on paper, so forth. And I realised that I could develop a whole series of, of works from this uh, idea. It was to do with the saturation of the picture playing with, with, with colour, with the aspect of pouring paint on, moving it around, using various type of, of processes to, to uh, develop a whole um, plane involvement of, of what was happening on that particular plane of, of colour. And I've worked with three series. The first series were the ones that I developed from the ideas in New York and brought back to Australia and, and carried on with. The second series were the more opaque paintings where I'd saturated all of the, all of the picture plane with paint. There was no open space of the canvas. The third series came about through wanting to use the openness of the, of the picture plane again by bringing back that nat the natural canvas surface. And that 
involved some very big paintings, including uh, one uh, over six metres wide by three metres high, and um, a number of other very big paintings, which are also uh, on show at the moment at Sullivan and Strumpf Gallery. And it's, it's this lovely pouring of paint on the surface and moving it around with what I used a very big squeegee on the end of a long pole and, and move the paint around. I had to use the painting flat and put the painting on the floor and, and moved around that. And that was based on Jackson's Pollock uh, um, choreographed episodes of, of work in his studio of painting on the floor with the canvas and, and being able to use all the aspects of the, of the uh, uh, size of the canvas by walking around it. There was no top to bottom per se, there was you know, uh, the sides and the top and the bottom and everything was as important as the next. So it was this learning process from Pollock and several other artists as well, including Helen Fa Frankenthaler, who was involved in, in colour painting, and a lot of the other people like Rothko and uh, Barney Newman, uh, that all used the, the aspect of, of colour, the expansiveness of colour, and uh, uh, it was, uh, it, it was a, a release in a sense, the, a highly emotive sort of release of, of uh, enjoyment and, uh, and, and just sort of loving what I did. Painting like this one over here, which is you know from this middle period of the stains. That's the second series. When yeah, it is. yeah, and it's much darker, isn't it? Can you talk a little bit about that work and and the fact that there isn't a lot of light? There isn't a lot. You know, this is yeah. built up of the the opacity of paint, this, this richness of developing paint onto paint onto paint. Um, but, but at the same time, there's this sort of <laughs> flow of, of drawing, of, of just the whole richness and joy of putting on paint and, you know, bugger any meaning. You didn't want to, if, you, if somebody wanted to say, oh, well, it relates to landscape or something, well, that's their, that's their prerogative to say that. I did, I did. Landscape is, is, is important to a certain extent. I, you know, I go through landscape and being a colourist, I'm very much aware of what's happening on the ground with particular aspects of colour, what might eventuate you know, in, in the landscape, what might eventuate to looking up into the, into the tops of the trees, the light, the, everything that's involved in landscape. But it's not about landscape. Uh, there's, there's particular reference there, but for me it, it's being part of the world, and my experience was, which comes from being part of the world, you know, yeah. as different as you know, interpreting something which is more realistic and, and yeah. so on.